So the very first thing that I have on the docket for today is Spectre Dev has a hypervisor that does work on PS5 version 1.x and 2.x only. He did state that for 3.x it doesn't work. So I think at this point we know that 1.x and 2.x is the only thing that that recent tweet that he released will be affecting. Now, for the best guess for the release, I would absolutely say this is probably going to be tied towards some sort of security or hacking hardware conference. So we'll have to see what happens with that. But normally, Spectre Dev always releases whatever he finds. So I absolutely expect for us to see this. Now, the other thing to note probably right now is, is that with that hypervisor, don't think that we're going to get fake package support and that the world's going to be absolutely great and fantastic because it won't with having that hypervisor support. Obviously, the biggest key thing to kind of note from there is, is that we won't need things like Lib Hijacker that we have been using with this current PS5 jailbreak. So hopefully that kind of resets some expectations for that. So the next one was, was that Flats has a hypervisor exploit that works on 3.x. He did state that he had tested it with 3.21. So the best guess of when would this thing be released? I believe this is very similar to the situation that just recently happened where basically fell overflow, they released their write-up, and then right after that, you know, a developer published a proof of concept. I believe that is what's going to happen, at least that's what I've heard is kind of the rumor mill, but yeah, you don't never know when or if these things are ever going to see it out in the wild. Now, the very last big item that I have is that we've now got a jar loader that will work with PS5s up to 7.61. So I thought what we would do for the rest of this video here is let's go ahead and let's take a look at that jar loader in action on my PS5 4.03. Okay, so if you head over to GitHub, which the link will be in the description, you will see this site here, which is PS5 jar loader. And over here on the about screen, it says remote jar loader for PS5 using BDJ vulnerability. So I'm going to scroll down here a bit and let's just take a look at this starting section. So it says the project uses vulnerabilities discovered in BDJ layer of PS5 firmware 7.61 and earlier to deploy a loader that is able to listen to jar files and execute their main class. This repository provides all the necessary stuff that you need in order to get this to work. So it does state right here that you will need to download the ISO release, which we're going to do in just a second together. You'll need to burn this to a disk, and then you can download one of the pre-compiled jar files and then there is going to be the command in order to send it to the machine. So I would suggest that you all start off by heading over to ImageBurn and going to their download page and then taking the mirror here that is provided by ImageBurn. These other ones contain all kinds of random nastiness. So take this one right down here and then just go ahead and get that installed on your system. Now, back over on the GitHub repo, we're going to jump over here to releases and we're going to scroll down a little bit and we're just going to take the ISO. There's absolutely no reason to build this yourself. So just go ahead and download that one right there. Now, while we're in here, I'm going to go ahead and grab the FTP server jar file. And so if you do scroll up, you'll get a little bit of more information about what's included in these examples below. Let's go ahead and open up ImageBurn. Okay, I'm going to go to Write Image File to Disk, and it should find your Blu-ray Disk Writer right there. Now I'm going to select a file. I'm going to select the PS5 Jar Loader and select Open. And now I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to press Write. 
And this disk did have something on it. I am going to go ahead and just overwrite it. Yours probably won't say that unless you also had some content already on your disk. Let's go ahead and we will let this complete writing. Okay, so we can see right here that the operation has successfully completed. So let's just go ahead and take that disk out and let's pop that in our PlayStation 5. Okay, so I just put the disk in the drive here. This is a freshly rebooted PlayStation 5. It says security manager disabled. And then it says jar loader is waiting for a connection on 10.0.0.142. Okay, perfect. So now you probably want to go ahead and pick up SoCat. It looks like this is going to be an easier method. So if you grab SoCat, just do a search on Google for it for 1.7.3.0. You will see something like this once it is extracted. Now, what I did was I went ahead and I copied over the FTP server and then the mini tennis game, just where it'd be a little bit easier to run it within this directory. Once you do that, if you just type in CMD up at the top, that will give us a command prompt inside that folder where we'll be able to work with this a little bit easier. Okay, and so once you get your terminal brought up, we're just going to type in socat.exe file, and we're going to provide that FTP server file name first. And then for TCP, we just need to give it that address that's displayed on our PlayStation 5. And once you do that, you can hit enter. And it looks like it completed there without any errors whatsoever. Now, back over on my PS5 display, I believe there's a problem with the capture card and it doesn't allow me to see what's going on right now on that screen. But I believe from now, we could go ahead and we can type in our IP address into FileZilla and it should work. Okay, so inside of FileZilla, I've just created a new entry here. And you will just put in the IP address. And then for the port number, you are going to need to use 9225. And for the login type, just set that to normal. For the username, that's going to be PS5JB, and there is no password. Once you have all of that, click on where it says connect there. And this is a great, great sign. It is a connection as a FTP server. So we'll go ahead and close out of this dialog box here. And right there, you can see we now have FTP'd into the system. I'm going to go back and look at the overarching system so this is very very cool so there i could just hear the disc spinning up and right there that's the contents that is on the uh, blu-ray disc that i just burned so yeah obviously this is just the kind of beginning stages here and so i'll have to play around with this and let you know what i find out Anyway, I hope you got something out of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out!